Ned, we're here in Tucson, the conference toward the science of consciousness, its 20th year. Uh, anything learned in 20 years? Oh, yeah, a lot. Um, you know, one very notable thing that's happened is there's, there's a lot of new or newish evidence that um, the frontal cortex is not as involved in consciousness as people thought mm. earlier. There was one uh, uh, example given in the talk by um, Alison Gopnik, where she mentioned that in um, psilocybin, um, hallucinogenic, um, hallucinogenic experiences, there is a, a substantial suppression of the frontal lobes, suppression of thought. Um, people say they, they have a kind of magical feeling. Mm. So that's one just straightforward. Mm. The people who, who have the views of consciousness that emphasize cognition, like Dennett or Rosenthal, who has this higher order thought view, um, or Dehan, who has the global workspace view, those, that's one item of evidence that those views aren't right. Mm, that's very interesting. If we look at the uh, possible explanations for consciousness, I don't know of any other area of human knowledge in which the spectrum of possibilities, it, believed by serious people, is so broad. That's you start right. out with yeah. a limitivism where consciousness doesn't even exist, then you go to yeah. hardcore reductive materialism, you can reduce consciousness down to the physics of, of, uh, of subatomic particles, then non-reductive. Uh, materialism, uh, that then you can go into different kinds of uh, ways of going beyond the material, whether it's integrated information or some kind of quantum theory with the uh, collapse of uh, yeah. space-time and very strange things, still within the physical realm. Yeah. Uh, then you can go to lots of dualistic views. Uh, uh, actually, before that would be panpsychic views where, where you have consciousness being a real irreducible phenomenon, but it's part of the physical world, part of the world as we know it, even though not quite physical, then purely dualism, and then you go to idealism and where consciousness is the yeah. only thing. Yeah, that's because of the famous explanatory gap, or in Chalmers' terms, the hard problem of consciousness. We don't have a problem like that in any other area. And that problem is that even if we were to find the neural basis of consciousness, and many suggestions have been made, with regard to every one of those suggestions, the problem arises of why that neural basis is the neural basis of consciousness rather than non-consciousness, or if it's a specific conscious content, why it's the neural basis of that content rather, like the experience of red as opposed to the experience of green. So there, no one has come up with this, even a remotely plausible suggestion about that. And so, um, people feel, well, it's worth trying any old thing. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> wild a, and crazy. Yeah. And some have said, if it's not wild and crazy, then you know for sure it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, some people think that. I don't myself think that. So you really feel that it is possible, in principle, to have a neural correlate of consciousness where you can say, yes, that is the, the experience of red? Well, I certainly think that's possible, but that isn't really the issue. The issue is, can we explain why it's the experience of red? We already have a pretty good idea for some experiences what their neural basis oh, oh, is. Oh, sure, sure. But so, for example, for face experience, we know the air, the circuit in the brain right, that does it. Right. We can be pretty sure that human face experience is activation of some kind in the in the in those circuits. Right. No, that that's for sure. But the statement that, that those circuits in that area, that is human face recognition, is the experience, that's the explanatory gap. No, that's not the explanatory gap. The explanatory gap is why is you can, that you can correlate. The, is activation in that? You can correlate it, but then the answer, the question of why, why activation in those circuits is the neural basis of face experience as opposed to feet experience or something else. That's it, well, the, it's, a, it's the same thing. Why is, it, why is it any experience at all? Yeah, you know, that you, too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That, that a second order thing is why is it experience yeah. of, of feet or face? Right, that's right. But why is it experience okay, yeah. at all? Yeah. Because any of these theories, whether it's integrated information or quantum or neural circuits or, yeah. or uh, synapse, whatever, it has to have some kind of an identity theory facet to it where you have yeah. to say that is yeah. the kind or, or else you can't, you can't, and that's the only way to bridge the explanatory gap is to say something is it. Yeah. But even if we were to be satisfied that that's what consciousness is, we would still want to know how it's possible that something that feels the way consciousness feels could be a brain state. And that's what right, we haven't right. gotten any illumination on. But what, what, in principle, 
what could be possible. Okay, so I think we've actually had some progress in narrowing the explanatory gap, okay. just slightly. And this leads me to think that the right way to approach it is the kind of things we've been doing, which is to try to put all the pieces together. And then at least we can hope that when we've got all the pieces together with some, no doubt, some ideas that we do not now have, maybe major ideas that we do not have, the, explan the explanatory aspect of it will emerge. Okay, so let's look at that spectrum that I gave from eliminativism okay. yeah. to idealism, and this whole yeah. thing with dualism and, and uh, panpsychism, this whole thing. Uh, yeah. First of all, w w where is Professor Ned Block on this? Uh, I'm... I take the view that you just mentioned, the old-fashioned mind-body identity view. I think consciousness is a brain something. We don't know, we don't know what, but that's, so that's my view. Uh, um, and what is your analysis of some of these other views that may be far away from yours or close? Well, I'm probably closest to, closest to Searle. We, we both strongly believe. Biological naturalism. Yeah, biological naturalism. We also believe in consciousness, on what Dennett say. Yeah. Um, where I differ from him is that he doesn't think, he, he says consciousness is a higher order property of the brain. Mm -hmm. um, and he's really, because he doesn't think it can be spelled out in biological terms, he thinks it's a primitive higher order property. I think that's an obscure notion. Um, if any, if it amounts to anything, it's a kind of property dualism. So, uh, uh, I'm, you know, somewhat close to him, but, uh, uh, but we, we disagree on that crucial item. Unlike Chalmers, I'm, uh, I'm not a substance dualist, so Chalmers is more extreme in the dualist direction. I'm not a panpsychist, Chalmers sometimes likes that. Um, Certainly not an idealist. Yeah, I'm not an idealist, I'm, I'm not an eliminativist like Dennett. Right. Non-reductive uh, materialism? Uh, well, that is more like um, of, more like Searle, mm -hmm. non-reductive mater materialism. Mm -hmm. I'm a reductive material, right. so I'm the right. extreme form. Right, so you're between Searle and Dennett in that sense, maybe. No, I'm but, really I'm reductive, not eliminate, not eliminative. Yeah, I said between. I said between. Yeah. Not, okay. Not, not, yeah. Not, uh, so you know, Dennett sometimes. Uh, will conflate reductionism yeah, yeah, so. with eliminativism. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Like, if it's reduced, it's not there. But I don't think that. No, right. I think there really right. is such a thing as that, water, that, even though we know what it is in molecular that's, terms. That's a, that's a good distinction. I totally agree with that. But you, being an identity theorist, that you're saying consciousness is the state, uh, some state of the brain. Well, you yeah. have no idea what it is, but, and that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. I mean, that puts the explanatory gap problems, you know, really squarely on your shoulders. I mean. Yes, it does. And, and uh, I don't have a solution. Nobody has a solution. But I think the way to get a solution, if there is a way, is to, um, uh, you know, keep doing the kind of neuroscience of consciousness work that's being done now.